Good morning, Grace Church. Welcome to Grace Church this morning. If you would stand, we're going to get started. How's everybody doing this morning? Okay, a couple people are doing okay. I don't know about the rest of you guys. Let me ask you again, now that you're focused. How are you doing this morning? There we go. Like my wife always tells me, focus, love. Focus. So it's amazing to be here. We're going to uh, open with a quick word of prayer and ask God to anoint our service. Father, we just come before you, Lord. First off, Lord, just release everything that we're carrying, Father. Every burden, every worry, every care, Father. We want to come here this morning just empty, Father, ready to be filled with your presence, ready to be filled with your spirit, Father. And Father, I pray that every word uh, spoken, Father, every word sang, Father, it's just a, a, a sweet smell and aroma to your throne, Father. And we come, Lord, just as empty vessels, ready to be filled with your presence, Lord. We pray for a fresh anointing, Father. We know that you are the creator of all, Father. We owe you everything. Thank you for that breath of life we all experienced this morning, Father. We come, Lord, just here thanking you for all the things that we not just the big things, the houses, cars, Father, but the little things, this, our car starting this morning and having power in our home, Father, and food in our table, Father. We just thank you, Father, and we come seeking your face and not your hand, Father. We come seeking what we can do to honor you this morning and not what you can give us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So right there where you're at, we're going to start out by singing the name of Jesus this morning. Stick it out. we 
Check it out. I see the King of Glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes. The whole earth shakes. Yeah. Life to His love and mercy.
than I am right now Wasn't holding you up So there's nothing I can do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud Cause I've never been more loved than I am Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. Cause you would cross an ocean, so why would it drown? Cause I've never been closer. Sing it out. Don't wanna forget how I feel right now on the mountain top. I can see so clear what it's all about. Stay by my side when the sun goes down. I don't wanna forget how I feel. Just 
When you will feel weak physically, when you feel weak emotionally, guess what? That's when God shows up stronger in your life. Why? Because he's the God that is more than enough. Amen. Listen, even if the worst case scenario where you lose it all, Jesus is still more than enough. Come on now. He's more than Ready enough. enough. Ready enough. You're more than enough. Come on now. Do you believe Ready it? I believe it. Come on now. You're more than enough. You're forever enough.
this. Father, thank you so much that I'm a new creation in Christ, that old things are passed away and all things have become new. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going up. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not, not the tail. I'm a world overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. Greater is he that's in me than the devil that's in the world. Greater is he that's in me than the circumstances I'm facing. Greater is he that's in me than whatever's happening around me. Oh, I got the greater one in me. I got the God that's more than enough living on the inside of me. He's Al Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, my healer, my redeemer, my deliverer, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I'm free. Come on now. Are you free? I'm free. Are you free? I'm free. Come on now. He's more than enough. I said he's more than enough. Hallelujah. Oh, I almost feel like going into tongues. Glory to God. Praise God. God is so good, isn't he? He's faithful. Man, that song is such a good reminder that he's a God that's more than enough. No matter what you're facing, he is the God that's more than enough. Oh, well, Pastor, what if I just go? Something happens to me and I die. Will you go to be with Jesus? I said, I remember one guy, he was in the hospital, and the doctor basically said, You're dying. And he was expecting him to cry and whatever. Are you serious? I'm dying? Really? What's wrong with you? I want to be with Jesus. I want to see Jesus. Come on. So, even a worst case scenario, if the devil knocks you down, you're going to be with Jesus. So, no matter what you're facing, you can rejoice in your circumstance. Why? Because I got Jesus. You got Jesus. I got Jesus. And if I got Jesus, I'm, I got the God that's more than enough. Amen. He's going to see me through no matter what I'm facing. Amen. I can rejoice in the mountaintop, and, but I cannot rejoice in the valley. I can rejoice. And that's what God wants us to do. Rejoice in the Lord. When Paul says, always. Not when everything's good. Not when everything's bad. Rejoice always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. And it says, that's the will of God for you. Well, I don't know what the will of God is. Rejoice. Amen. Because he's the God that's more than enough. Amen. He's such a good God. Well, are you, are you ready to take communion? Or are you ready to run? Amen. <laughs> Do it, do it, do it, do it. Pastor, Pastor John's going to get you going in a little bit here. He'll get you going, amen. We'll make you run. <laughs> so, anyway, if you need it, yes, if you do have your elements, go and raise your hands. The ushers will get you one. Oh, I'm so thankful that he's more than enough. Told you it was Linda. I'm so, I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful I got Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I'm so thankful that I got Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, you could be around a bunch of people and still be lonely. Yeah. But when you know you got Jesus mm. inside, you could be around nobody by yourself and not be lonely. Because you got what? Him on your side. You got him here. Amen? That's what the song says. Because you're with me. Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow, I will fear no because you're with me. And he says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Why don't you take your bread? I want you to say this. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. Thank you so much. That you prepared a table in the presence of my enemies. And in this table is the bread of life. My Lord Jesus. His body that was broken for me. That was broken for me. He bore all my sickness. He bore all my pain. He bore all my pain. And I flat out refuse. I flat out refuse to be sick. To be sick. I command cancer. I command cancer. Sickness. Sickness. Disease. Disease. Anything that's trying to mess with my body. Anything's trying to mess with my body. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I command you to leave me. I command you to leave me. In Jesus. In Jesus. Say it like you need it. Leave me. Leave me. In Jesus. In Jesus. Because I got the bread of life. I got the bread of life. I partake of the bread of life. I partake of the bread of life. There's no sickness in Jesus. There's no sickness in Jesus. And Jesus is in me. And 
name of Jesus. So I cannot partake of his bread. I partake of his bread. I partake of his bread. I partake and he gives me life. And he gives me life. Life abundant. Life abundant. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Go ahead, partake. There on the table, I want you to say this, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Father. On that same table. On that same table. Is the cup. Is the, the cup. cup. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Just like grapes. Just like grapes. When they're squashed. When they're squashed. The juice comes out. The juice comes out. But when Jesus' body was squashed. When Jesus' body was broken, squashed. Broken. Broken. Bruised. Bruised. The precious blood. The precious blood. The wine of his blood. The wine of his blood. Precious, Precious and holy, holy. that speaks better things speaks better. than evil. It cries out it to, cries you, Father. Out to you, Father. I'm forgiven. I'm, forgiven. I'm, healed. I'm healed. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. The blood has made me righteous. The blood has made me, the blood has made me holy. I am now the temple of the Holy Spirit. The of the holy Spirit. So I can't help so but live a holy but life. Live a holy life. I can't help. But walk in deliverance. Walk in I can't help. I can't but say help. no to my flesh. But say no to my I can't flesh. help. Can't but help. walk in victory. Walk in for victory. the blood has set me free. The blood has set me free. For all eternity. For all eternity. And I thank you for it. Thank you for it. No condemnation. No condemnation. No more bondage. No more bondage. When the sun is set free. When the sun is set free. Go ahead. Good morning, good morning. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> Pastor Ruby, I want to send you my number. I send you my number. I'll let her know. She sent me Texas and I'm not getting them. That's weird. Maybe she wrote down your number wrong. Because I know you sent it to me, but I'm... I'm Does everybody know that spring is coming along? Yeah. 
on the 19th so quick already. And yet the weather is changing, rainy one day and sunny the next day. It's crazy, this weather. But on the 20th, we do have young adults at 7 p.m. here in the youth building. Young adults in the house here. Amen. Young adults. And then, of course, we have a Bible study with Miss Patty, and she'll be having that at her home. Go to her house there, and at the gate, they will take you or show you where the, the Bible study is being held. And that's at 10 a.m. for those that attend her Bible studies. And then also just want to let you know also that Let's, Let's Talk is coming around the corner also. That's going to be on April, April the 6th. I want you to get excited about the group also. You know, we have a box that we put out the last time and we asked for suggestions on topics about what to talk about. The, the day that we did Let's Talk, that was our grand opening, so it wasn't... There wasn't a topic really that we had suggestions over, but it was something that was a grand opening that I spoke about. Uh, this time though, we had suggestions and we're gonna be talking about boundaries. This is what you guys wrote in there and we chose, we're gonna speak about boundaries and boundaries is, you know, setting limits and setting standards in your life. And it's so important to have standards, right? So important to have limits of what you allow in your life and what you what you can, what you're saying I can do, what you're saying I can and can't do. And so, you know, sometimes when you set boundaries in your life, people can take you as, um, when you say no to them, they can either get upset or they can root for you or they can either frown upon you. And so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna see, you know, what is right for a Christian? What's right for a Christian? Do you ever get curious to find out what, what's right for me as a Christian? What, what can I allow and what can't I allow, you know, as a Christian woman? And, you know, those are curious questions, don't you think? You know, so we're going to be talking about that. And this is open, you know, to all of us. It's not open just to the adults, but, you know, youth. You can come. Teenagers, you can come. You want to hear what we're talking about as far as boundaries because I'm sure that even with yourselves, you want to know, like, in my relationship, you know, with, with boys, you know, what are my boundaries? You know, uh, singles, you want to know what are my boundaries? You know, as far as my dating goes, you know, women that are married, you want to know what are my boundaries, you know, in my marriage. So there's so many boundaries. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a panel up there. And our panel is our women, uh, my team. And we're, we're going to discuss these things as we're going to open it up to you so that you can ask questions, and we're going to answer it according to the Word of God, not just our opinion, but according to the Word of God. And so it's going to be interesting. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and pass up a, a sign-up sheet. If I can have one of the ushers or someone pass this up. And the reason that we like to take like an attendant, not attendance, but how many people are going to go, as you saw the spread of food, there last time, we need to know how many people are going to be there so that we know how much food we need to have there for you, okay? Is that good? Amen. Amen. And then remember, also on the 31st, we have Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday, uh, the children are going to be having an Easter hunt in the back here during the second service. We need Easter eggs, Easter plastic eggs. Make sure you... Bring and help out with the Easter eggs. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them at Sam's. I believe at Sam's, they're like a double bag, and they're pre-filled already. Uh, Sister Maria doesn't want empty eggs. Make sure they are filled with candy or something in them, okay? And so we'll have that. And then also up in the front, we're going to have uh, a setup with hot dogs, and we'll have popcorn and uh drinks and we'll have uh, cotton candy and they have a setup already with Miss Jessica setting that up and as you go out the doors you can take that with you or you can stay in fellowship at the end of service and that's on 31st okay got it 
Amen. So Pastor Manuel, he will be sharing on our partnership. Here we go. Thank you, thank you. Amen. All right. Good to see everybody in your smiling faces. I got a little chance to get away a little bit this week, so so it was it was fun. It was good to be away, and so thank you guys for allowing me to do that. But yet, I'm not preaching this morning. I'm going to have Pastor John preach this morning, and next Sunday, you're going to enjoy it. So I'm taking this month off preaching, and in some time to, to focus on, on myself and my family and so forth and so on. So thank you so much for doing that. Amen? And if you ask, Pastor, how are you doing? I will tell you I am doing good. Amen? I am doing good. Thank you for your prayers and everything. But um, I want to just bring up real quick on, on, the, on the pizza with the pastors. What the pizza with the pastors really is all about, it's kind of like if you've seen in other churches, you know, they have a, a, a membership class. But we call it partnership. It's a partnership. It, it, it becoming a partner with Grace Church. And the reason it's so important to become involved with a body uh, I shared this in the first service. It's, it's so important that you belong somewhere. The, the Bible says that a, a man who isolates himself seeks his own interests. So when you isolate yourself, you don't realize that it's, it's not good. It's not good to be isolated. And, and even, again, Adam, the Lord says it's not good that he's alone and so forth. So it's good to be around other people. And that's why we designed our, our church. If you look at our vision with growing, sharing, and serving, growing in grace deals with our Sunday services. We're designed, you're going you're gonna to gonna grow in the word, you're going to grow in, in, in the things of the spirit. Our, our groups that are meeting in the middle, that's sharing his grace. Those are designed so you, again, you're not alone. You're, you're building community with others. And then the last one is serving by grace. That deals with any ministry you get involved in. So what we like to see is really every individual in our church eat, uh, attend church faithfully, that's growing. Attend at least once a month a group so they can make connections with other people. That's sharing. And then at least once a month, serve in some type of ministry. Why? You put into practice what you're learning. You, that way you're, you don't become a fat cat. You give it out. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You just don't drink the milk, but you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're part of the leche lead. You're going to serve it out. Amen. Anyway, never mind. Anyway, that was, that was bad. But, uh, but see, there was a study done in Russia years ago that they took, I don't think it was orphan babies, and they, did, they wanted to see what the was effect of just holding and connecting with the baby. The, the one group, they fed them food and everything, but they paid no attention to them. Didn't hold them, didn't hug them, nothing, just fed them. The other group, and this is kind of this is years ago, guys, uh, they, fed, they fed the babies, but they hugged them, they held them, whatever. Well, guess what? The babies that weren't held died and were sickly and so forth compared to the babies that were held, not just fed. Amen? And so what, what does that show? That God created us to be involved with other people, with community. You need, you, you, in a, it's not healthy. I mean, I've even looked into psychologists and so forth, and they've done the research that when you isolate yourself and you're not, you're not part of a group or a family and so forth, uh, you actually don't think very well. You make bad decisions. You, you're not around, you get wisdom being around other people and so forth. And, and not only that, but it just, you just feel like you don't belong. But when you get involved in something, you become part of a body of Christ. And that's why I believe God has a church. Otherwise, we would all just meet, have our own you know, service at home with the Lord and whatever. No, God wants us to be white. A baseball player needs what? A baseball team. A soccer player, you know, a trumpet player needs an orchestra. Amen? Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? You have to belong. And I've said it in the first, I'll say it in this service too. Everything that's happened in my life as far as where God has brought me and so forth is because I chose to get involved in a local church when I was 20, 19, 20 years old. Ever since then, I've been totally involved. And it was through being involved in the local church that what? I actually met the people in my life that brought me to go to Bible school. I ended up going to the Bible school because of it. I ended up, you know, meeting my wife over there because of it. I ended up having connections over here because of that, connections over there because of that. Everything that I am and where I am today is because I was involved with the local body and God led me and brought me to the place and the calling that he had in my life because of that. So it's vital, so vital that God, I really believe, if I had not been involved in the local church, I might probably be wandering around. Like, you know, even the Lone Ranger needed tunnel. Right? Right? Amen? Even me, a Hispanic, need a tonto. 
Amen. So you see what I'm saying? So it's important that we belong. It's important that we become part of it. And that's what the partnership thing is. And, and I'm going to explain the vision and what we're all about. But we're also going to give you pizza and salad. And you don't have to return the pizza and salad if you don't become a partner. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Praise God. Well, I don't know what else to tell you. But anyway, so yeah, that's what this is about. So this is what it is. If you haven't become a partner or a, a, in our church, go ahead and pass this around. It's, it's going to be next Sunday after the second service. Amen? So come hungry. If, if you are signing up, come hungry. Amen? Are you ready for the, uh, not the word, but you're ready for offering, tithes and offering. Amen? Raise your hands. The ushers will get you an envelope if you're ready. Thank you so much for your giving. Listen, if there's anybody, I know I, somebody was asking, uh, what's coming up is we have a, we're going to uh, seal the parking lot. It's been nine years. It's due. We need to seal the parking lot, get it sealed up and everything. So the campus fund money that you've been giving towards is going to allow us to do that. Amen. So we're going to try to get that done before Easter. So that way it's, it's, uh, it's sealed up, uh, striped, brand new striping, so the parking lot looks nice. But if you have any time this week and you have nothing to do and you, you like pulling weeds, come on over to our church. I will put you to work. Huh? You got any kids that are, that are doing nothing? Bring them over. I got some weeds to pull all week. I'll put them to work. We got some... We got a lot of weeds we want to get rid of before they do the you know the ceiling and everything make it look nice it's just been coming up like crazy i am looking for a landscape company but until then i need to get these weeds pulled out before they do the crack and seal so if you're not doing anything this week give me a call i'll be there <laughs> amen i'll be here so you know and stuff so but but thank you for your, for your faithful giving in that we're, we're going to get that done and we want to we want to make it look nice and so forth before easter and, and it's been way overdue we want the we want the pavement to last many years. Amen? Amen? So if you can help us, any day you can come. We got plenty. Don't worry. That you'll take care of it. No, we got plenty. I can put you in uh, many places. <laughs> Even in the alley, alley needs to be done over there. The neighbor will come and tell me, hey, uh, those weeds are real high. I know. Okay, okay. And I, last time I had to go there and pull it because she came. I don't want her to come and tell me that the weeds need to be pulled. All right? So if you want to help us. But are you ready to give? Thank you, Father God, so much. Let's pray. Thank you for the opportunity to give this morning. We're so grateful, Father, that you've blessed us so much. You've blessed us with our jobs. You've blessed us with the ability to do the work we do. And, Lord, we want to continue to be a blessing to your kingdom, to your church. And so we just thank you, Father, for the opportunity to give. We give cheerfully. We give willingly, Father. And we thank you that it's going to come back to us, pressed down, shaken over, running over. And, Father, thank you for giving. I want you to say this. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would give me a creative idea, just one creative idea, to make more money. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? I believe that. It just takes one idea. Just one idea. Idea. Amen? It is. It just takes one idea. I'm believing God. I want, I, want, I want to increase in my finances. Come on. Just it, All it takes is one idea. And somebody in here will become a multimillionaire for the glory of God. Now, when you get blessed, use it for, bless the kingdom of God. Bless, yes, bless your family, but for God's glory. Amen? I believe, because these are the end times, and I, God wants to do a quick work before he returns. And, and I believe he's coming soon. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen? Well, are you ready for the word? I'm going to have Pastor John coming up and share the word of God this morning. Oh, youth. You are dismissed. You get out of here. Go to your building. We got a building for you over there. So you, you are dismissed. Am I on? Am I on? You got both on? Yeah. Yes. Am I on? Am I on, Cecil? All right. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Are we all going to the youth building or what? We all... uh, we're all young at heart, huh? We're all young at heart. Amen, amen. You know, I, I do want to, um, uh, something that Pastor was sharing, that, uh, you know, he, that he said that he's always been a part, you know, serving since he, when, since he gave his life to the Lord. And, and you know, that's something that, a couple of weeks ago, I, I, was at a, I did a, a funeral service, 
And it was something that I did not expect. I mean, I knew I was doing the funeral service, but I only expected like, I, I believe like 40, maybe 50 people. And when I got there, there was probably over a thousand people. And I, it caught me off guard, honestly, it caught me off guard. And I started saying like, Lord, how did I, and you know, how did I end up here, Lord? And really it wasn't so much because of how many people were there, but who was there? And it caught me off guard and I started, you know, I, I think I even panicked for a little bit because I, I text, I text Ruben and I said, Hun, it's crazy here, it's packed. You should see everybody out here. You should see how many people are here and all this. And uh, the group that was there, it, was, it's not, it wasn't like a very nice group, but it was, that's who was there. And so I, it was a gang, you know, it was a big thing. And, and so my first thing that I thought was in my head, I, I was thinking like, I got excited. I started saying like, thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to minister your word, to preach the, you know, the gospel. And, and because it had, like I said, it had caught me off guard and I just wasn't expecting it. But the reason I bring that up is because of what Pastor Manuel was saying. You just start serving somewhere. God will lead you to places that you never thought you'd be doing. You never thought you'd be doing some of these things for God that you're going to end up doing. Right now, some of you are going to be doing something for God that you never expected you to be doing for God. And this is why, you know, I believe that it's great to partner up with this church here because God will lead you to do some things that you never thought you'd do. Amen. I never thought I'd preach the gospel. I never thought I'd be a, a, a preacher. And I'm not. I'm not a preacher. I just get up here and I just like, get ready, get set, go. You know, I, I've always said this, that when I preached my first message, I had probably like, cause, and I was preaching to the youth. I was a youth pastor. And, 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 you know, my pastor said, hey, just prepare something so you can, you can minister to them like for about 10, 15 minutes. And I said, that's all you got to do. And I said, all right. So I prepared a message and I, it's almost like I timed it. Okay, okay, 15, all right, okay, I got to do this part. I think I read it in two minutes and I was done and I was like, now what do I do? You know, it's just something that you learn, amen? But being connected, being a part, being involved, God will get you to do some things you never thought you'd be doing, amen? Amen. I said all of that just to start. Glory to God. Let's pray and we'll get into the word. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing, Lord God, and in our midst, Lord God, here. We know, Father, great things are coming up ahead, Lord God, because you're doing a mighty thing here, Lord God. And Father, we thank you that we are going to be a part of it, Lord God, as we open our hearts to be a part of it, Lord God, and that we sit here, we stand here and say, use us, O Lord. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, and we give you all glory and honor in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. amen, amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. If you do have your Bibles, open to Romans chapter 8, verse 1, and we'll get going here. And it's out of the King James. And it, verse 1 says, there is therefore... Now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That's the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. We're going to talk a little bit here. If I ask you right now, who is the worst enemy you deal with every day? Some people like to say the devil, but people who are real say it's myself. When you look in the mirror, you see yourself and you say, Oh my God, I got to deal with you today. <laughs> Again? You know, 
and, and sometimes, you know, we like, you know, there's many that like to blame the devil for everything that goes wrong in our lives. Something happens and we say, oh, the devil, the devil made me do this. The devil did that. The devil and the devil is somewhere saying, I wasn't even there. <laughs> the devil is saying, what are you talking about? You know, I didn't have nothing to do with that. Amen. The, even he says, it was all you. <laughs> Smile at your neighbor. Amen. Smile at your neighbor. But us, you know, here as born again believers, how many of you know that our greatest battle is dealing with our flesh? Amen. It's dealing with the flesh. Because how many of you got up this morning and was so excited and said, It's Sunday. It's time for church. Glory to God. I do believe there's some here. I do believe that. But I also believe, and I'm speaking about myself, not about you, okay? So you won't get upset. I'd rather sleep in for another hour. Can I take this Sunday off? Can I make, uh, you know, I'll go next Sunday. I'll go to two services next Sunday. I already got blessed by my sister here. My sister came up and she says, Pastor John, I skipped the Suns game to come to church today. Because they, they played at 10 o'clock in the morning and she's a big Suns fan. I'm a big Suns fan. And so we always talk about the Phoenix Suns, but she says, I skipped, I skipped the game to be in church. <laughs> I love that. I said, hey, amen, that blesses me, hey, amen. But see, we, we deal with this. We all deal with this. We all deal with our flesh. Our flesh is one of the biggest fighters against doing what God wants us to do. And we deal with it on a constant basis, on a daily basis, on an everyday basis. And sometimes we don't like to admit to it. We don't like because we, we think, well, you know, that just shows my weakness. No, that just shows you're human. That just shows you're real because we all deal with it. Anybody that says they never deal with the flesh, I don't know about them. I don't know. They're, they might be too spiritual for me. Amen. Because I've always come to know this in my own personal walk that it's something that I deal with every single day. Have I overcome some things? Of course I have. But it's sometimes if I'm not careful, I allow those things to start overcoming me again. Amen. Just because I overcame it once doesn't mean, you know, it's not going to try to come up again. Amen. But you learn how to deal with it. You learn how to say no to it. And that's the biggest thing that we start finding out here is here as we start reading in Romans chapter eight. You know, and, you know, like I said, most people believe that it, that it is the devil that is the devil will, will, of course, he'll say his two cents. He'll come in and try to make it worse. He'll come in and do that. Yes, there is a devil out there. I do believe it. I, I know it. But I'm not too concerned about the devil because why? He's, he's a defeated foe. And if you know he's defeated, you know he's under your feet. There's no reason why we should be allowing the devil to come and mess with our lives. If he does, we need to put our foot down and say, stay down there. Amen. It's not. I'm not going to look at him in the eye. I'm going to look at him down here because he's under my feet. Amen. So he's got no power. He's got nothing over me. So you got to know that. So why am I battling so much? I'm not battling the devil. I'm battling my flesh. My flesh is what I'm, I'm struggling with. My flesh is what keeps me away from reading the word. My flesh is what keeps me from praying sometimes. My flesh is what keeps me from serving God the way I want to serve God or the way I'd like to serve God. It's my flesh. But I'm here to tell you that you can overcome your flesh. Amen. You can overcome. You will learn how to say no to the flesh. Some of us need a little stop it. Stop it. Some of us need a <laughs> slap in the face like cut it out already. OK, but no, no, no. We're not going to ask you to come up here. We're not going to slap anybody unless the Holy Spirit tells us to. Then we will slap you. Amen. The Holy Spirit says it. I got to do it. Yeah, I've seen it too. I've seen people get slapped. I've seen and people get healed 
right after they got slapped, punched, <laughs> punched. I <laughs> got the joy of the Lord, yep. <laughs> That's real joy. That's joy right there. So you see that, that our flesh is our worst enemy, amen? Because how many of you have seen it in action? Our flesh is our worst enemy. Because think about this. You, we can be driving to church and we have an argument in the vehicle. No married couple knows about these things. <laughs> I, once again, I'm talking about myself, not talking about you. But you pull up in the parking lot. You're arguing. You're arguing. This is how fast we can overcome the flesh. You get off the car. You don't want to talk to your partner, but you get off the car. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. How are you today? Hugging everybody, loving them. You look, yeah, to love you too. You know, we're ready to love one another, serve one another. We're ready, we're ready. What are we doing? We're telling our flesh, cut it out, flesh. Stop it. Stop it. It's almost like sometimes, you know, we, we'll say that to people like, grow up. In other words, we got to tell our flesh, just stop it. And here's the thing. Here's the great thing about it. Because we're going to read more. Now, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but that's okay. We'll get to it. You, you know that we deal with these things. We deal with the flesh. And we know that God has already helped us with this. God is our helper in this. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. You know, yes, that's why I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is inside of me. But it's in a, in a flesh that still likes to do the things that it used to do. So it's almost like there's a bright light inside of me. But my flesh is saying, yeah, but I like the other stuff. Amen? You look at me too funny. Stop doing that. Amen. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that with your flesh, all right? <laughs> so we see this, that even though, like I said, we can, blame, we can blame the enemy, we can blame somebody else, but here's the thing. We need to learn to see that it's us. You're never going to change another person. You can only change yourself. Why do we argue? Why do we get mad? Why do we do these? There's nothing wrong with arguing or anything, but the Bible says sin not. So in other words, I can't allow my flesh to overtake this argument. I got to learn how to speak, get my point, whatever I got to say. But I, it doesn't mean that I got to say something to hurt that person. Why? Because that's my flesh. Because my flesh always says, if I can't have what I want, I want to make sure you're not going to get what you want. Why? We're pretty selfish. Amen? It's going great up here. Glory to God. <laughs> um, go to Romans chapter 6, verse 6. We're going to get going here. Amen. No, God is good. See, we can escape things that, that from the world. We can escape, like, you know, we can stop watching TV. We can stop hearing certain, because how many, how many of you, you know, you hear certain music and right around, the old flesh kicks in. You hear a song. Yeah. Remember? Remember? Remember when we used to go to clubbing? Remember? Remember when we used to do the Remember? Remember when we used to do all those parties back in the day? The music or whatever it is that triggers those thoughts, all of a sudden your flesh is saying, yeah, let's go do that again. That was fun. That was a great time. But see, the flesh will always remind you of the great times, but it will not remind you of the bad times. It's not going to remind you of where it took you. It's not going to remind you of where you got that it destroyed a lot of things in your life, your relationships, things that happened. It's not going to take you there. It's only going to take you where it was fun. See, because sin, it, it is, it's, it, you, you'll love it for a season. 
But if it takes you season after season after season, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I want. Amen? So there's always triggers out there in the world. We can separate ourselves from men, but how many of you know you can't separate yourself from you? <laughs> Every morning, flesh is there. Every morning, oh my God, my flesh. Every morning we get up and we got to do. Man, I got to I got to walk in love with that person. I got to forgive that person. I have to do this. I have to do that. The flesh is saying, "Don't do it. Who cares?" Nobody's watching. And then that's where the enemy does come. Nobody cares about you. Nobody's watching you. Nobody's, nobody's going to tell you no. You're an adult. You're a grown-up. You're over 19. You can do what you want. Be what you want. And all the time... Our flesh starts listening to it. Our flesh is saying, yeah, why can't I? Because you're 42, you're old. You shouldn't be out there like a 19-year-old. You're not that age anymore. Amen. Those days are over. What we're trying to do is we're trying to live the old life that used to be there. And we're not knowing how to stay in the new life that God has given us. Why? Because the old life was a lot easier because the new life takes some work. Takes some work to stay in the things of God. It takes some work. It's, it takes an understanding of who God is, what God did for me, how much God loves me, how much grace He's poured in my life. Amen. But it was easy over here because I can go to a store. I can buy me a beer. I can buy, I can do this. I can do that. I can go over there. And I can still go to church on Sunday. But then pretty soon, these days start getting bigger and funny and having better time that all of a sudden, ah, I'll go next Sunday. Then I'll go, and all of a sudden, you start separating yourself from the Spirit of God rather to be in the flesh. Amen? See, it's a battle for us. It's a battle for us. But it's a winnable battle. It's a very winnable. Why? God has already conquered it. Amen? Now, where did I say Romans 6? It says, knowing this, that our old man, Romans 6, verse 6, King James, it says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. In other words, it's been defeated. We don't have to serve it. We don't have to give in to the flesh. We don't need it. We don't have to. But if we do do it, thank you, Lord. You're merciful. Thank you, Lord. You'll help me overcome. The Bible talks about temptations because we say we get tempted in the flesh. We get tempted to give up. We get tempted to give in to the things we don't want to do. Amen. Because how many of you have ever struggled like you, 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 you want to give up something, but it seems like the temptation for it just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. Amen. Because it, it's almost like, man, I, I'm trying to lose you know, let me take it this way. I'm trying to lose some weight. Man, but I see all the commercials. I see all the food. I see it pass in front of me. Every time I say I'm going to go on a diet, there's food around me everywhere. And the temptation is real. Because, oh, God looks good. It's so fulfilling. Mmm. I'm only... <laughs>
instead of 10 tacos. <laughs> and I'll add two tostadas because I'm giving up four tacos. <laughs> it's a battle. It really is a battle. Sometimes it, it sounds funny, but you know, when you're going through it, it's not that funny. It's not that great, amen? Because it's hard to say no to the ding-dongs and Twinkies. Amen? But we're trying. You know, I, I said this in the first service that, I, you know, I've been going to the gym like the last 10 years. I, I, go, I try to go like twice, three times a week. I try to go, you know, I go play basketball. I'll lift weights sometimes. I know you can tell, but, uh, you know, I go, <laughs> you know, and I go and I work out and everything. And every year in January, February, oh, my God, the gym is packed. There's all these people. I'm trying to go over there to where the mirror is, and there's like 10 people. Oh, man, I can't even get in front of the mirror. Shoot. They're all in front of the mirrors taking selfies. <laughs> all right. So I just say, you know, and we, uh, you know, I kind of laugh. The guys that I know that, you know, we go and play ball, and, and we're, we're there, and we all know, like, because even the basketball courts get filled up. There's all these guys, and all of a sudden, it's like, man, we got to wait to play and all this kind of stuff. And then, but, but now, if you go to the gym, it's all the regulars. They're all gone. <laughs> They're gone. They last about a month, two months. Some, some make it three months. Amen. Some hold on for dear God, for four months, five months. And then usually if they hold on to about half a year, you see them keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. But here's the thing. What did they do? They overcame their flesh. Because how I many of you know, every time we try to start something new like ours, it always seems like it's so hard. Why? Because the flesh is going to battle you. The flesh is just going to say like, I ain't getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning and go running. The flesh is going to say, what do you mean pick up 100 pounds? You can't even pick 50 pounds up. Are you going to pick up 100 pounds? And you know, it'll battle you. It'll just fight you. It'll argue with you. Amen? Why? Because the flesh only wants to be pleased. Amen? Just wants to be pleased. And we're going to see this. It says that, Read it again. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. So what does that mean? The old us, it's dead and it's, it, it's no longer there. So why am I trying to allow it to resurrect again? It's crucified, the old me. So I have to learn something here. I have to learn how to say no to my flesh. Amen? Amen? I have the Holy Spirit in me when something that I, my flesh is wanting to do. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect at every time. No, I've missed it many times. But what I'm saying is so many times I realized that something inside of me was telling me, no, don't do it. Don't go there. Don't think about these things. Don't give attention to it. Just don't go there and see that was the holy spirit speaking inside of me telling me what what was he doing he was helping me overcome the flesh amen, amen? and so when i learn how to take heed to it you're going to see too that you will overcome the flesh in in uh the same chapter chapter 6 verse 12 through 14 i'm going to read it out of the tpt It says, sin is, dethroned, is a dethroned monarch, so you must no longer give it opportunity to rule over your life. Who has to not give it opportunity? You must not give it opportunity. Amen? Your spouse is not going to do it for you. They might say something, but they can't do it for you. Controlling how you live and compelling you to obey is desires and cravings. 
So then refuse to answer his call to surrender your body as a tool for wickedness. Instead, look at this, passionately answer God's call to keep yielding your body to him as one who has now experienced resurrection life. You live, now, you live now for his pleasure, ready to be used for his noble purpose. Remember this, sin will not conquer you, for God already has. You are not governed by law, but governed by the reign of the grace of God. So he's telling me, he's already conquered it. He's already done it, amen. All I got to do is not give in to it. Amen. Not give in to it. Some of you, so I know some of you are looking at, but it's so much easier to think about it than doing it. Just because you thought that, no, you can do it. Because that thought already came to your head. Like, oh no, it's, it's not as easy. With God, yes, it is. With God, is it going to be a challenge? Sure, of course. But with God, we can do all these things. With God's help, we're going to take care of these things. We're going to overcome. Who is this that's writing this? When we think about this in Romans, who's writing this? This is Paul. Paul, you know, the, one of the greatest, you know, the, uh, one of the apostles that wrote, you know, most, a lot of the Bible, and he's trying to show us like, hey, you got to deal with this, and you can deal with this. You can overcome this. You can, amen? See, a lot of you here, you overcame it this morning because those that are on my side that got up this morning and, oh, my God, let me sleep in, let me sleep in, let me sleep in, let me stay in, let me stay in. But you finally said, no, I'm going to get up, I'm going to get dressed, and I'm going to be there. What did you do? You overcame your flesh. Amen? Because you, the spirit man inside of you, wanted to come to church. Amen. They wanted to come to church. You came to church. You were ready. Praise and worship started. Glory to God. You're ready. You're raising your hands. You're, you're singing. You're, you're doing everything you, you know. Why? Because I came to church. Why do I come to church? To worship God. Praise God. Amen. Now, um, what did I read? Romans 6. Romans 6, there's many scriptures, I'm not going to give them all to you, but go to James chapter 4, verse 1. James chapter 4, verse 1, okay. And I'm going to read it out of the TPT. It says, what is the cause of your conflicts and quarrels with each other? Doesn't the battle begin inside of you as you fight to have your own way and fulfill your own desires. See, the battle is inside of us, amen? It, it, it battles us, it, it's there. Why? Like I said, the flesh just wants to fulfill its own desires. That's all it is. That's all it is. See, you, your, the, your spirit wants to do the will of God. You love God. You worship God. You praise God. But our flesh doesn't want to. How many of you have ever been in church and your flesh is battling you like, I don't want to worship God today. You're usually a two-hand worshiper. Today, I'm only a one-hand worshiper. <laughs> or sometimes, you know, we say, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not the worshiping kind. I don't, I don't like to raise my hands. I don't not, you know, that's who we are. We all worship God in a different way. I don't know where you come from, but, you know, if you were a, a vato loco back in the day, you know, you were a solo, you used to stand like this. And you come to church, and that's how you worship God? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You're a worshiper. Glory to God. You're going to worship God however you worship God. 
You don't want to raise your hands up? You don't raise your hands up. You don't want to run around? You don't run around. You want to jump up and down? You don't have to jump up and down. But if that's who you are, that's who you are. That's what you do. But I'll tell you this, that one of the greatest times I ever had in the presence of Almighty God is a day that I went to church and my flesh did not want to be there. At that time, something had happened. This was years and years ago. This wasn't even when, when my daughter passed away. No, this was even, this was years before that. And, and I remember we went to a church service and I did not want to be there. I was inside of me. I was like, oh my God, I wanted to leave. That's how I felt. I was at a place that I wanted to give up on the things of God. Not that I wanted to give up God, that I'm always going to believe in God, but I just said, well, I don't want to... I don't want to be like a minister. I don't, because I had already been a pastor and, and I said, I don't want to do that. I just want to go to church and that's it. I don't want to do anything else. But inside of me, my spirit man was like, that's not who you are. I want God. And that day, I remember I was there and I wanted to leave. I wanted to get up. I wanted to walk out of church. And I've never, ever felt like that. But that day, I remember I felt like that. And when they started praise and worship, I don't even remember the song. I don't remember anything. But I saw people start worshiping God. And inside of me, my flesh was telling me, just get out of here. Just get out of here. Just get out of here. And I finally recognized it and I finally said shut up and I said it to myself shut up you know you love God you know you want to serve God and just because of that flesh I'm going to start praising God and I started jumping but I was jumping mad I was jumping I was like but I kept doing it I kept doing it. I kept doing it. But what started out in the flesh ended up in the spirit. Because it helped me. It ministered to me. It ministered to me. It was God helping me overcome my flesh because my flesh was speaking very loud. But my spirit Spoke up inside of me, no, 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 uh uh, that's not how it's gonna go. Glory to God. No, we're gonna start worshiping God. And I remember, like I said, I really did. I started jumping, I started, and, and inside of me, it was almost like an angry jump. Like, I was mad, like, you know, I was mad, but then all of a sudden, I mean, tears just started coming down my face. Just, I just started crying, and I knew God was healing me of all what I was going through. God was healing me. God was setting me free from what was bogging me down. And it did. It set me free after that. I didn't have a problem worshiping. I didn't have a problem being in church. I didn't have a problem with none of that. Amen? Because God is good. Somebody say, God is good. good. See, why is it that our... Did I read it? Did I... Yeah, I did. Why is it that we that we deal so much with our flesh is because I don't know how old you are, but you've been having your flesh for all those years. And I don't know how long you've been serving God. Maybe some of you have been serving God since you were a little kid, grew up in church, grew up in the, and never really did anything out there in the world. And then, but like, I know a lot of you, you didn't grow up in church. You, maybe you went every once in a while, but you grew up going out, doing things, doing, enjoying what the world offered, amen? And, and, and then all of a sudden, you gave your life to the Lord, and now you find yourself in the house of God, and, and you're growing, you're learning, you're doing all these things for God, you know? And it becomes a nature in our flesh because for so many years we did this, 
And now we're trying to do this. And our flesh is saying, but I have more fun over there. It was more fun when we were over here. But see, that's just the lie of the flesh. Amen? And that's what God has already overcome. Because how many of you know your flesh never takes a day off? <laughs> Don't get happy. Don't get all excited. Glory to God. Romans 7, verse 21. See, because what I, what I started finding is this, is that the flesh was always trying to stop my spiritual progress. My flesh was always trying to stop me from growing in the things of God. And the more I learned to say no to the flesh, that's how I learned to say more yes to the things of God. The more I said yes, it was easier. It became easy just to say, yeah, what do you want me to do? Sure, I'll do it. Yes. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Amen? Romans 7, verse 21 says this, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and, bring me, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. See, Paul here is just admitting, hey, he was human. Just like I said, we all go through struggles. We all go through this. No, nobody here is perfect. Nobody, we're all going to miss it here and there. Amen. We're, it's, 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 it's bound to happen. But here's the great thing about it. With that desire, along with that desire to serve God, we have to be careful because sometimes our flesh tries to solve our problems. And we can't allow the flesh to solve our problems. we got to make sure that we allow the Spirit to help us with our problems. Amen? In, um, see, because we may have the nature of the flesh, but we also have the Holy Spirit living in us. See, we do have our enemy, which is our flesh, but we also have our helper, who is the Holy Spirit. And if he's going to help, if he, he helps us, he leads us into all truth, what is the truth? The truth is God's word. And he's always leading us back to the word, back to the word, back to the word, back to the word. Back to the word. And so when we're dealing with the flesh, you know, somebody might say, Lord, just take this away from me. I think it was Brother Hagen that said, what? You want me to tell God to let you die? Because you're always going to deal with the flesh. Amen? See, the Holy Spirit does not remove the nature of the flesh, but overrides its hold on your life. Amen? It overrides it. The Holy Spirit does. See, you always got to know this, that the flesh does exist, but it is powerless to control your life when we are under the authority of the Holy Spirit. It's powerless. Can't control your life. You got to know this. You have to know this. So when you're dealing with your flesh, when you're dealing with it, man, you can just get up and say, nope, I'm not going to allow this. I'm not going to allow it. Some of the things that we do is, is, you know, we do it because we get out of tune with what God is doing in our lives. I, I, I remember a sister in the Lord, she used to tell us this all the time. She said, you know, if she ever, if she got into an argument with somebody, she would always say, Lord, let me backslide for five minutes and I'll come right back. Why? 
so they can deal, they can deal with it, amen? Sometimes we find it that it's easier to deal with it with the flesh than it is through God. And when you start finding out that no, it's not, because when we start dealing things through the flesh, we're going to find out that it's just going to get us more and more and more in trouble. Amen? Um, let me go, um, go to Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. What time is it? We'll, we'll be ending here. Wow, it's already 12.30. Romans 8, verse 5 through 6, TPT says this, Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. For the sense and reason of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and peace. Doesn't that sound better, life and peace? That's what we all want. We all want life and peace. And here's the, the, what, what we're going to see next week, we're going to talk about this, is sometimes if we're not careful, we allow the flesh to fulfill what God is trying to fulfill in our lives. The real joy, the real peace, real thing. And we start seeing that if we're not careful, we try to do it our own way. We try to make it happen. And sometimes you just have to wait for God. You can't rush God. God's going to do it. God already said he's going to do it. And we got to learn how to put our, faith, our, our flesh down and say, no, we're going to wait for God. We're going to wait for God. We're going to allow God to do this. Why? Because I know what God has is a lot better than what my flesh can produce. My, fle my flesh can produce us a joy that will not be sustained. But God can produce a joy whoo, that'll take me further and further and further with him. Why? Because that's the real joy. That's the real life. That's the real peace that we're all seeking. Amen? We're all looking for it. The Bible says that this is why Paul said to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I like that. Amen. It is life and peace. Amen. Let's go ahead and let's stand up. I want to get the prayers up here. So if anyone you need prayer, I want you to come up. Come next Sunday, I'm going to minister on, on that. On, we'll, we'll continue on this. Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, you're an overcomer. You've overcome the flesh. Thank you, Lord. If you need prayer, you need, some, you need prayer, just come up to one of the prayer partners right here. Let them pray with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We got, we got one over here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is good, God is good, God is good. God is good, God is good, God is good. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit who abides in us, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that he's always oh, guiding us, leading us, directing us, Lord God. And Father, that he is continually showing us, Lord God, to your truth of the word of God. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you for each and every person in here today, Lord God, that you are with them, Lord God, touching them, ministering to them, Lord God, healing them, Lord. And we thank you, Lord God. 
We give you all glory, we give you all honor, and we give you all praise in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, praise the Lord. As they're praying for them, if there's anybody else, you can come up, they'll pray with you. But let them, let them pray over them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Well, turn around, greet someone, and let them know, I'll see you next Sunday.